Okay, so this video is a continuation of the episode 1 content, originally meant to be the explorer questline, but it quickly evolved into a general Victoria Island story for low levels as more classes were introduced. If you haven't seen the Andras, Marbos, and Valifor video yet, I would recommend pausing this video and watching that one first. I go through all the version rundowns and the history of this content throughout the years, and the questlines of those three bosses coincide with the Amducius and Croquel questlines from this video, and it eventually ends in the penultimate Astaroth portion, so yeah, just make sure you've watched the other video first. Okay, so for the Amducius storyline, similarly to all the others, once you would finish your basic bowman training with Athena Pierce, you'd go see Hill and Henesis for your advanced training, and then you would report back to Athena. Later, Hill would call you back for a favor. He had found an antique while reading a book borrowed from Jay, and asked Kieran in the Nautilus to find that antique if she ever found herself in Leafrey. He thinks that she in fact has, and so you are sent over to the Nautilus to retrieve it. Traveling to the Nautilus, Kieran says that she doesn't even have it at the moment. It should be stored in the basement of the ship, and you'll have to rummage around the crates to find it. When you bring it back to Kieran, she asks you for a favor first before giving it to you. The ribbon pigs in the Nautilus are causing too much of a ruckus, and the crew can't load or unload the ship without worrying about their luggage being damaged. After you would kill some and then deliver that antique to Hill back in Henesis, he basically has no reward for you other than a story that all bowmen would be interested in hearing, the legend of the ancient bow. Once upon a time, there lived a king who was known for his wisdom. His kingdom was always affluent and his people led happy lives, but out of nowhere, a demon had appeared. The demon had cast a musical spell on the people, making them do nothing but play all day. And with the kingdom doing nothing but playing, there came a shortage of food and the people began to starve. And with that came stealing. The kingdom was slowly being destroyed. And so the king looked through an ancient book and constructed a bow, which was eventually used to defeat the demon restoring peace to the kingdom. Hill asks if it isn't amazing that a person could make a bow to defeat a demon. It would be even more amazing if this thing still existed. If his story sparks your interest, you can learn even more from Rowan in Alinea. Although the fairies are reserved and won't speak to strangers, you will have to find a way to befriend them first by speaking with Chief Stan, who happens to know a lot about fairies. Chief Stan understands that you've heard the tale of the ancient bow, and since the fairies are fairly guarded, you'll have to entice them with something that they love such as music. He recommends playing them an ocarina, which he can construct with the necessary materials. Tree branches and an Alinea tree barrel. You head over to Alinea while playing this ocarina. and eventually come across Rowan, who recognizes your pitch issues, but she still appreciates the sound of this instrument. You ask her about the ancient bow, which she assumes that you mean Solomon's bow. According to legend, it was sealed after killing the demon, but you'll also be able to find this bow at the top of the tree that grew. And climbing all the way up, you find that bow, and it speaks to you. It doesn't seem to recognize its name, Solomon's bow, but it does find it familiar. But something must be wrong which must be the reason why you're there to even see it. Every event in the world happens according to one's destiny, and adventuring to find the bow means that it's time for it to awaken. When it was sealed, its memory was shattered into pieces, which the green mushrooms ate, and you won't be able to recover all of them, but maybe you can collect enough to be useful. As you would fetch these memory fragments for the bow, it mentions that it had been sealed for a long time and doesn't know why its abilities haven't returned yet, figuring that someone must have taken its abilities and then squandered it away. The bow suddenly remembers vaguely seeing someone it knew in Pyrion, and it sends you there. The sealed bow leads you to Black Bull, who recognizes this as Solomon's bow, which he saw in Henesis when he was young. If you wish to know more about the bow that was used to defeat a demon, you can speak with Dances with Balrog. DWB is surprised to see this legendary bow that was said to have been sealed ages ago that is in your possession, as you are simply a beginner bowman. He tells you that once upon a time, a demon in Henesis played music so loud that the townspeople went deaf. But a brave man made a weapon to defeat that demon, Solomon's bow. According to legend, the person who made it was a king, but he's not certain that part was true. Anyway, the brave man defeated and sealed the demon in the bow before he died, and it's incredible to see it in person now. Though you're unsure if it actually is Solomon's bow for some reason, even though you've been talking to this thing 
Dances with Balrog suggests putting it to the test by hunting a few stumps. And when you do, it seems incredibly weak. But you do mention the sentience of the bow. With the legendary bow being so weak, DWB takes a much closer inspection of it now, seeing some sort of shape that seems to have been erased, figuring it must have been the emblem that sealed the demon. And he realizes now that you said the bow talked to you, and so he calls you a fool. That was the demon telling you to release the seal. It was released and it escaped after getting rid of the power of the bow. And DWB is sure that the demon is out there now hurting townspeople. You need to head to Kerning City and seek out the Dark Lord, who will have undoubtedly heard the latest information about this demon. So you go and you meet with the Dark Lord, who already suspects that you are the person who released its seal. He thinks the demon is hurting the townspeople in Henesis, and its hiding place may have been discovered. The Dark Lord tells you that the name of this demon is Amducius, and unlike most demons, Amducius has an admirable musical talent and can play just about any instrument, though of course he uses this talent to do harm to others. A dark portal in the Henesis hunting ground is where this demon is hiding, but everybody has failed to enter. It's been discovered that a person needs a loud instrument in order to enter the portal. The Dark Lord offers to make you an instrument like that, but he's going to need some specific supplies first. Orange mushroom caps, octopus leg sticks, and a pumpkin head. After gathering them, he makes you something called Dark Ween's Monster Drum, stating that he used to be a renowned musician in the old days. Despite knowing where and how to find this demon, you still don't have the means to defeat Amducius though. The Dark Lord doesn't have that kind of information either, but has an idea of whom to ask for aid. You've heard of the brave man from Henesis who made Solomon's bow, and there's no way that he's still alive, but you might be able to find a descendant somewhere. He suggests looking around Henesis and speaking to Athena Pierce. He's not really certain, but he trusts his thief instincts. So you visit Athena Pierce, who mentions that it's been a long time since you left on your journey, and that you've grown quite a bit. She also recognizes that you now carry Solomon's bow, and you tell her the story of everything kind of leading up until this point. She mentions the Dark Lord is known to be the most reliable source of information, and he's also got keen senses. And he is right in the fact that Athena Pierce actually is the descendant of the person who made Solomon's bow. You won't be able to defeat Amducius without the power of the bow, which was unfortunately taken by that demon. But she'll be able to find out how to restore its power using this ancient book that she's inherited. How convenient is that? Wow. After some time researching, she finds a special spell that can inflict damage on the demon. How convenient is f that? And if you can acquire something called the Demon Hunting Scroll from Blue Mushrooms, she can restore the power of Solomon's bow. So you go and you retrieve that, and she conducts the restoration process, and once finished, she says it's incredible to now see this legendary bow in person, and she can already feel the unstoppable force of it. Amducius is still hurting townspeople as you speak, and now only the final battle remains. You, of course, head over to Henesis Hunting Ground, and you enter this dark portal while playing Darkwing's Monster Drum, venturing forth to confront Amducius with the newly restored legendary Solomon's Bow, and you defeat the demon. Returning to Athena afterwards, she's incredibly proud of you, especially as you're just a novice bowman. But she tells you to continue training diligently, as she's just received information that proves the reason Amducius' seal being broken was not entirely your fault. The Dark Lord has told her there's a different powerful force behind everything. So moving on to the pirate questline involving Crokel or Crocel, you would once again go through the basic training with Kirin, and then you would go through the advanced training with Mirhat, and then return to Kirin. Instead of giving you an order or a mission, she'll have you do something more fun and interesting. Kirin gives you a treasure map that's covered in different colors, which obscures what's underneath. She's sure that it indicates where something is hidden, and now it's your task to uncover the secrets of this treasure map. She has you start by seeing Betty in Alinea. You go and you visit Betty in Alinea, who has you gather squishy liquids from slimes to construct a green slime eraser to remove the green on the map. However, she's unsure about what to do about the red portion, and she sends you to Grendel, who has experience with just about everything. Grendel, who was just about to have this fine glass of wine that he had received as a gift, doesn't happen to have any more 
appetizers, and he asks you to gather chunks of pork for him. However, Grendel is actually completely useless and can't tell you anything about what to do about the map, so he suggests that you visit Black Bull in Pyrion instead. When you meet Black Bull, he tells you that there are no treasures in the world, because he spent a good portion of his youth searching for treasure, thinking that he was following a real treasure map. I don't really understand this text at all, but anyway. He says you'll come to your senses while hunting dark stumps and realize there's no such thing as a treasure map. When you return, he tells you not to even think about treasure anymore. It's a waste of valuable time and energy, but he asks where you got this map from. And you tell him from Kirin in the Nautilus, and he just quickly changes his mind and says that it couldn't possibly be fake then. He takes a real look at this map, full of colorful markings, mentioning that someone must have intentionally colored the map to prevent people from discovering what was on it. The map is also hand-drawn, but it looks almost too primitive. If you can bring him flints from dark stumps, he can use them to build a fire that can evaporate away this red ink rather than erasing the portion. Even though you do absolutely everything right, it doesn't remove the red from the map, and Black Bull has you take it to Ayn instead since she's incredibly bright and would figure something out. Ayn basically feels this strange force emanating from the map and asks for some time to inspect it, eventually finding out that the red on the map has been cursed with the blood of an animal. In order to remove the red, you'll have to tame the soul of animals, and to do so you need music, a microphone that'll produce a special sound which she can make if you bring her the materials, some long strong sticks, small snail shells, and a piece of white pants. Once you gather them, she makes Ian Mercury's microphone, which can deliver the soul of the singer. If you sing into the map, your soul will reach out and release the curse. After doing all of that, Ian says that the map is coming along, but she now doesn't know how to remove the remaining white part. She suggests that you go visit the Dark Lord in Kerning City, who is known to be the most reliable source of information in all of Victoria Island. You visit him, and he suggests that you get some rest while he examines the map. And later on, he mentions it seems poorly drawn. He tells you to go to the Kerning construction site and into one of the hidden streets and collect these sacks of ink, and also to not ask any questions. And when you return, the Dark Lord says, he won't be removing the white from the map, but instead spraying the black to trace the lines and make out what's hiding underneath. And once he's finished, he doesn't know which region the map is indicating, and then he sends you to Chief Stan in Genesis. Speaking to Chief Stan, he's actually seen the place not too far away while he was on his way to the Nautilus, and he has you go and scope things out in the forest east of Genesis. You end up finding two birds, and in searching their nest, you find an old key and an old worn out piece of paper. And Heading back to Chief Stan, he feels something evil emanating from this emblem that's drawn on the old worn out paper. He has you check in with the person who gave you this map. So you go back to the Nautilus and you see Kieran, who mentions it's been quite a long time since she last saw you, and notices that you've grown quite a bit. She asks about the mystery of the map that she gave you, and when you show her the old worn out paper and the emblem, she happens to recognize it. According to an ancient book, it's an emblem that signifies Krokel, a vicious demon that creates illusions that blinds humans. The treasure map is just one of Krokel's many pranks, and she knows that Krokel was sealed in the Nautilus's basement, and someone must have released Krokel's seal. From what she knows, it takes someone with unimaginable force to break that seal, and she has quite a bad feeling about it. She requests that you go and see Porche, who is in the basement. And Porche knows that the demon was sealed inside, but as far as he could tell, it was already opened a long time ago. And you return to Kirin, who is worried about it already being broken, saying that you need to defeat Krokel before he causes any further harm to others. You'll have to go to wherever he is, but before that, she mentions a treasure chest in the basement that she's never found the key to open. She thinks the key that you may have found might correspond to the chest, but the demon is also just taunting you. But you go and you open this chest, finding an emblem inside. And Kieran says that this is clearly the emblem of Krokel. While you were trying to get the box opened, she happened to discover Krokel's hiding place, but she wasn't able to go inside because of some kind of magical force but the emblem you discovered might allow you to enter. You head over to the dark portal in the forest east of Henesis, and you face Krokel, defeating this demon. And Kieran says that you haven't been bad for a novice, and you'll be a great help in the future, but you can't get lazy or overly confident. She's sure that there's a stronger force behind everything, so you should continue to train diligently. Now, with 
Each of the demons defeated by various adventurers from each of the towns in Victoria Island, each respective first job instructor would contact you, ready to get to the bottom of who broke the seals of the demons. You would travel to each of the demons dark portals to hunt monsters and gather clues. Imperion DWB would say that he can sense a force much more powerful than Andros, and it needs to be found before it can break the seals of the other demons. You go to Andros's dark portal and find a ripped piece of paper, and DWB says he knew that there was something but it just isn't enough, suggesting that you head to the other towns and collect more clues. In Kerning City, the Dark Lord would mention that evil energy still lingers even after Valifor has been defeated. You end up finding another piece of ripped paper in Valifor's Dark Portal, and the Dark Lord says that the demon behind everything likes to leave a trail. It's his way of telling you that he's always a step ahead, and he almost seems too confident. In Henesis, Athena Pierce says Amducius has been defeated, but there's a greater force being omitted, and she's certain that that it's the demon that broke his seal. You find another piece of ripped paper in his dark portal. In the Nautilus, Kieran mentions her instincts as a pirate tell her there's a greater demonic force even though Krokel had been defeated. You find another piece of ripped paper in Krokel's dark portal as well. And finally, in Alinea, Grendel tells you that he's felt another evil energy ever since the awakening of Marboss, something even more powerful. And once again, you find another piece of ripped paper. Once you have gathered all of these clues, though, you're contacted by the Rememberer, and he tells you that he feels a powerful force radiating from Sleepywood. He asks that you bring the clues you've collected to him. Journeying to speak with him, he says that the demon is inviting you to find him, and intentionally scatter the papers in each town. Piecing them all together now, he mentions that it is an emblem, a sinister and arcane emblem that cannot be seen by weak forces of evil. And the Rememberer will need time to analyze it using an ancient book, and recommends that if you even want to face the demon and succeed, you'll need to at least train to a certain level. That level happened to be only level 25, but... As a warm-up, he has you defeat horny mushrooms, zombie mushrooms, and evil eyes in the area while he continues his research. And according to the ancient book, the emblem signifies a demon named Astaroth, who is nothing like the weaker demons that you faced up until now. Astaroth had one goal, to control the demons and create total chaos by spreading disease, distrust, cacophony, burglary, and illusion. The Rememberer wondered what could even compel a being to be so evil, but what he found was difficult to stomach. Astaroth simply enjoys watching people suffer. He's not even trying to achieve anything, and his intentions are purely malicious. The Rememberer's not really sure how or why a demon like Astaroth would even come to Victoria Island, wondering if there's even another demon behind him. One thing is for sure though, Astaroth must be defeated. As you train and you get stronger and you eventually return to the Rememberer, he's uncovered Astaroth's whereabouts, but it'll be hard to travel there because of an extremely potent and pungent smell. He's found an alternative answer for you from the ancient book. No matter how potent the smell, it wouldn't matter if you just didn't breathe it. So, all you'd have to do is equip yourself with a device that would prevent the stink from stimulating your senses. He can build a gas mask if you bring him the right materials. Wild boar leather, evil eye eyeballs, and charms of the undead. He takes a little while to construct it as the ancient book only contains vague instructions, but now you should be able to pass through it without inhaling this poisonous gas. Now that you're strong enough, the rememberer has quite a bit of confidence in your strength and courage, and gives you the information that he's uncovered about Astaroth. And Astaroth has many skills, but his most dangerous being his killing spell, which you'll notice immediately. You'll have to avoid being hit at all costs, as it shoots out all of his collected dark energy at once. You'll have to search your surroundings to find an escape. You basically go inside, fight through the hordes of demons, and eventually face Astaroth himself. Once you're successful, the Rememberer tells you that you can definitely be called a warrior of Maple World, but you shouldn't let it go to your head, as there is still quite a lot of evil left in Maple World. And that's about it for the Amducius, Krokel, and Astaroth questlines, and episode 1 lore as a whole. But let me go over a little bit of the demon's mythology before I start talking about my opinions of the content. 
So Amducius, also known as Amducius or Amducius, is another one of these Dukes of Hell. He has a humanoid appearance, but with claws replacing his hands and feet, and the head of a unicorn. His theme seems to be representative of cacophonous music, and he's associated with thunder, storms, and the billowing sound of trumpets. His questline has you entering his domain while playing loud music, where you can even see one of his attacks using a trumpet. For some reason though, the theme of this questline is actually more more focused on the story of Solomon's bow, which I don't think is actually inspired by anything from the Testament of Solomon or any of the Ars Gosha demons. I spent a decent amount of time trying to find a reference or something similar, but I just can't find anything. If you guys have any idea of the source inspiration or a king saving his kingdom from a demon by constructing a bow or weapon or something, let me know because I just can't find anything. Anyway, moving on to Crokel, also known as Crocel or Procel or Prokel, is another duke of hell that appears in the form of an angel, sometimes taking on a feminine form of long flowing hair and large blue wings. He's mostly associated with teaching geometry specifically, but also other natural sciences. Krokel is also related to water, but more explicitly warm water and baths, and creating an illusory sound of rushing water. Similar to Amducius's questline, Krokel's doesn't really seem to be related much to the actual theme of the demon, more so focusing on uncovering this treasure from an obscured map. But anyway, moving on, Astaroth, also called Ashtaroth or Astarot, is another great duke of hell. The Ars Gosha depicts him as a man riding on an infernal beast-like dragon, carrying a viper in his right hand. It's said that you cannot approach him due to his powerful stench and noxious stinking breath. In other depictions, he is a nude man with draconic features, such as wings, hands and feet with a second pair of wings after the mane. He wears a crown and holds a serpent in one hand while riding on a wolf or a dog. Astaroth is a little more interesting than some of the other demons though, as it's kind of debated that Astaroth's name origins are rooted in the Phoenician goddess Astarte, similar to the Babylonian Ishtar or earlier Sumerian Inanna. In the Hebrew Bible, her forms are referred to as Ashtoreth and Astaroth, but Astaroth as a demon was first mentioned in the book of Abramelin, Abramelin <laughs> in the 15th century. But in the 18th century tomes, Grimoire Verum and Grand Grimoire, Astaroth is considered one of the three supreme evil demons alongside Beelzebub and Lucifer, which are a lot more popular names that you may have heard of before. In Astaroth's questline, we get a small hint that maybe somebody else could be behind his appearance in Maple World. So potentially that could have been Beelzebub or Lucifer if it had ever continued on, though I don't really think it intended to. In the questline, Astaroth's potent smell is a plot point which requires you to construct a gas mask, and when you actually catch sight of him, you can see the two sets of wings and a snake scepter in hand, and the draconic wyvern snake-like creature that he mounts. Now, I said it in a previous video, but overall I really like the episode 1 content as a solid continuation of the basic quests, which serve to introduce you to other areas and the other leaders of Victoria Island. That said though, compared to the warrior, mage, and thief questlines, these bowmen and pirate storylines presented in this video seem like way lower quality to me. And more specifically, the pirate one is really lackluster. It almost seems like there was a certain point where they kind of just stopped caring about the story and quit putting in any effort into tying everything together neatly. The actual quests leading up to Astaroth though, I thought were pretty cool. Like, I really love the idea of needing specific survival equipment or key items to enter layers and that kind of thing, which also worked into the demon gates for the other bosses. But needing the gas mask to survive Astaroth's poisonous air was something really interesting. The fight itself, if I recall correctly, was actually challenging for the levels that it was meant for. Personally, I didn't mind that it had a level cap of 40. The rewards were actually beneficial for its level range, and the weapons were visually unique for its time. Obviously, as time went on and the leveling curve just made leveling way too fast, that level 40 cap and the rewards became pretty redundant and they actually removed it. But with all the accessibility bugs and the quest removals and all that stuff, the episode 1 content just became obscure over time. 
If you want to subscribe and click the little bell icon, you can get a notification for when I actually do get around to making another video. It's been pretty difficult lately with the coronavirus stuff going on and the quarantine things. It makes recording really difficult because of all the surrounding sound from outside and in my household. But anyway, if you enjoy any of the lore, share the videos with your friends or something. It would actually help a lot. But anyway, if there's anything important that I'm missing, let me know.